is going on, all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. Now, a while back, I made a video on what all the buttons do on the dash of a MCI J4500. I figured today, since I'm actually doing a charter, and no, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna vlog this charter. It's very small and insignificant, and honestly, the passengers uh, on this charter are of a special nature, and they really don't want to be vlogged as far as where their pickup is, where they're going. But what I will do during my downtime is show you guys what all the buttons do on board a Van Hool CX-45. Come on, let's go. Welcome aboard Coach 234. 234 is a 2020 Van Hool CX-45. But today I figured it would be appropriate to do something on the Van Hool since I am three weeks away from going to Macedonia and Eindhoven, Netherlands to visit VDL and the Van Hool manufacturing facility. Now, folks, I realized in the last video, I mentioned that I would be going in September. That trip actually got pushed back. ABC contacted me and uh, they had to push the date back to November. So early November, I will be heading to Eindhoven, Netherlands to visit VDL and Macedonia to visit the manufacturing plant uh, for Van Hool coaches. And I can't wait to show you guys what that trip's gonna look like, but today, a prelude to the trip, I'm gonna show you guys what all the buttons do on board a Van Hool CX-45. Now, before we get started, the first thing I wanna point out, I probably drive MCIs the most since uh, that is the make and model of coach we have the most of here at Peoria Charter. We do have quite a few Van Hools, and I would say I spend about 30 to 40% of my time on Van Hools when I drive trips. And the one thing that I always have to get used to when I hop on a Van Hool is pushing the button downward means on instead of off, whereas in the other make and model of coaches like MCI and Prevo, pushing the button downward is off. In the US, it's customary where if you push the button up or switch up, that usually is on and down is usually off, but it is backwards on a Van Hool. And it's been like that for a long time. On, off, on, off. You know what, I'm curious. At, at first, I kind of want to blame it as a European thing, but let's go see if the Mercedes Tour Rider uh, buttons do the same thing. We're gonna need the keys. Okay, guys, moment of truth for the European theory that down is on and up is off. Toilet paper, anyone? I don't know why that's there. All right. Let's put the key in the Mercedes. Powering on. Let's do the uh, night lights here. On, off. See, what else can we do? Let's do the mic. On, off. On, off. 120 volt, on, off. Okay, so that kind of debunks the theory that uh, the reason the Van Hool's switches are backwards is because it's European. The Mercedes Tour Rider is uh, definitely a European uh, coach, even though they're built in Turkey. Uh, Van Hool is built in Macedonia, however, the headquarters and designs is uh, uh, of Belgium origin. So there you have it, folks. All right, let's go back and see what all the buttons do. Okay, so now that we've established that uh, even in European standards, Van Hool's um, switches are kind of uh, oriented backwards where uh, down is on and up is off. Uh, let's move forward and uh, I'll show you guys what all the buttons on board the Van Hool CX-45 uh, does. Now, real quick, let me just add that we are on board a 2020 model and in 2020, Van Hool gave the CX-45 and the CX-35 a complete facelift as far as interior goes. It definitely looks a lot more modern with a black trim and they did away with that light blue dunnage and it's been replaced with a grayer uh, style 
dunnage uh, around the steps. And as you board, you instantly notice that the overhead compartments has been pushed back and recessed outwards a little bit, giving you a uh, much more open feel as you walk down the aisle. As you approach the rear of the coach, you also notice that the restroom received a huge facelift. It's no longer that little corner round restroom and uh, they definitely made it larger. And the toilet is actually facing uh, to the left of the coach instead of uh, horizontally uh, angled. The natural lighting is absolutely beautiful, especially with the curtain. It just adds a whole nother level of comfort and hominess on board a moving motor coach. But the one thing I will still complain about is the European style toilet bowls. And this one isn't only on Van Hool. Every motor coach that comes from Europe has this style of toilet bowl. But man, is it hard to use. And there's definitely a lot more splashback on these style of toilet bowls compared to the simple MCI bowls where uh, there really isn't any bowls. I think there's an option to get a bowl for the MCI, but really it just goes right into the tank. Starting on the left-hand side, you have the emergency brake release. This is used in case of emergencies. Uh, the coach should lose all its air. The brakes by default will set to the lock position. And if you absolutely need to move the coach, you can push this down and hold it and it will actually uh, release all the brakes. But you really wanna be careful using this because if your coach does not have air and you push that down, you're not gonna be able to stop it. So you really wanna use that for, with caution. The other two switches next to the brake release is also emergency override switches and the emergency cutoff switch. Uh, once you hit that, the coach cuts off all engine power. It shuts down all the electric power. Again, uh, this is an emergency use button. Initiate shutdown sequence. The auxiliary brake cutoff, this is a switch that you would use uh, if you need to instantly turn off auxiliary brakes, such as Jake brakes or retarders. And uh, you can do that by turning off the Jake brake or the retarder by using the actual Jake brake or retarder switch. However, this is a more comprehensive switch where once you switch it, it just instantly cuts all auxiliary brakes. And again, this is for emergency purposes only and it, it definitely makes it so that it leaves out the guesswork if you want all auxiliary braking functions to cease to uh, operate on the coach. Ahead of that is a cigarette style charger, uh, microphone clip, you can clip a mic here, and next to that are two USB ports, which I've been using on this charter. Air brake release that releases the parking brakes, and I love the uh, 2020's new way of adjusting the mirrors. You can select the left mirror, right mirror, we'll select the left, and these buttons will toggle the mirrors to move, as you can see. Much, much better than the old joystick style uh, mirror adjusters that the older Van Hools had. What a fascinating modern age we live in. Moving onward, there's a really large cup holder. Absolutely love the cup holder. Nice driver compartment down below. And uh, on the left side forward dash panel is the ignition. Uh, this is accessory mode and this is engine start. Uh, you wanna make sure this is on first, then this will start the engine. Gear selector, transmission, uh, standard Allison transmission selector, neutral, drive, and reverse. Above that is your um, cruise control. This is master switch for the cruise control. And then to the right of that is uh, resume, accelerate, set, coast. Uh, lane assist, you start to depart your lane, uh, the coach will warn you and basically in the van pool it's on the seat. The left side of your butt cheeks will start to vibrate if you start to go off the lane on the left or the right side of your butt cheek will vibrate if you start to go off the road on the right. Sometimes it feels pretty good. Oh my my my. That was not supposed to be anything naughty or derogative. It just feels like a good massage. Come on, people, get your heads out of the gutter. Below that is the ASR. This is basically traction control. And uh, again, if you push it down, that turns it on, it activates it, and it disables the traction control uh, of the coach. And we definitely don't want to disable that. We'll leave that back on. Now in 2020, when Van Hool gave the CX-45 and the 35 a facelift, one of the things they added was the uh, new digital dash. And I absolutely love 
that they finally went digital. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the old Nintendo Game Boy. I'm really showing my age right now, but if any of you have ever played a Nintendo Game Boy, it had this classic green and black hue uh, as, a, as a background. And the older style of Van Pool dashes always reminded me of a Game Boy, even down to its 8-bit MIDI beeping noises. Uh, I really felt like Van Hool needed an update on the dash, and in 2020, they finally added it. Now, I will say the first time I drove a Van Hool with this dash, it scared the heck out of me because I thought that I was low on def and low on fuel. And this is kind of misleading. Uh, the fuel actually is full right now on this coach. And uh, the actual way you'll see that the fuel level is uh, right here, this little green mark. But if someone is not familiar with what the fuel gauge actually should look like, these little red lines down on the end really gives a driver the appearance that the fuel is low on this coach. And Albert. <laughs> I swear I can't make a video without being interrupted. You were filming! <laughs> 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 now on the 2020 model, it still has the original steering wheel, and uh, but the 2022s are when Van Hool actually switched to the smart wheel. Van Hool has a very interesting way of uh, changing and adjusting the steering wheel position, and it's this button down here. And once you press it, the steering wheel can be telescoped and moved forward and backwards. Sometimes when there's low air too, when you first start at the bus. Oh, that's a, also, because yeah. it's air activated. It's air activated, that's a really good point. The steering wheel is air activated, so. Next up is the door activator button, and it's a simple button that you push and it activates a door. Luggage bay locks. And going below on the next row, this is the kneel function. On the Van Hools, uh, this regardless of whether they're the newer model or the older model, Van Hools kneel really slow. Sometimes you don't even know if you're kneeling or not. I know when I first drove a Van Hool, I pushed the button and uh, I really had to uh, wonder if the bus was actually kneeling. Next button is the raise rear function and then pushing this will raise the rear of the coach and that'll be indicated on the dash that the rear suspension is raising and turning it off will remove that message. Also, the front kneel will trigger a message that the uh, vehicle suspension is lowering. This is the tag lift button. This will lift the tag wheel uh, in tight turns. That's a good function to use. Four ways, a blank, the fan controls the speed of the fan for the driver. Driver temperature controls. Driver recirc, uh, the AC uh, activation and uh, on off button. And again, Van Hool has a reverse button philosophy where down is on and up is off. And when I first started driving a Van Hool, I will say that I accidentally turned the air conditioning uh, off when I tried to turn it on. I also did that in a van pool. I also turned up the temperature one to turn it down. <laughs> yeah. Why is it backwards? Next is the temperature controls. This will adjust the temperature on the dash. I hope that the lighting is, yeah, okay. And then this is passenger recirculation air. On the new 2020 Van Hool CX45s, I absolutely love the new design of the uh, passenger service panel. It definitely looks really sleek. But I will say one of the things that Van Hool kind of went backwards on is the overhead passenger blower. I feel like that you can barely feel it on the newer uh, style Van Hools. Also, when it comes to the overhead blowers, there is no direct control on the dash that seems to uh, turn the fans on and off. Now guys, if I'm wrong about that, please uh, let me know down in the comments below. I don't drive these things enough. So uh, maybe I'm just not seeing it. But I did look at the manual and I actually skimmed through it and I could not find uh, where you would control the overhead lower fan speeds. Another blank down below, headlights. And this is a three position rocker button where up is off, 
middle is daytime running lights and down is on. On a Van Pool, this button will forever be depressed and different from the other buttons when everything is off. So this is the fog light. Fog light button, you got the cornering uh, lights and then this will turn on the surround the surround lights, the luggage loading lights. To the right is the blinds for the driver windshield. On the bottom row of the center console is the driver light. Center is activated by the door. Up is off and down position will turn it on. To start the van hole, the driver's light button needs to be in the centered position. Uh, otherwise, the coach will not start. Now, if any of you are gonna leave a comment saying, James, uh, you just gave away the secret and that's unsafe, you can find this information anywhere on the internet, uh, including the Van Hool driver handbook. So yeah, don't, don't blame it on me if you lose your Van Hool. My recommendation is always lock your buses when you're not in them. Following that is the reading light. Pushing the button down will force all reading lights to come on and stay on. It's a good way to diagnose whether or not they work. The passengers will no longer have any kind of control whether or not to turn them on or off. If the passenger does attempt to push the on off button, it will not turn them on. In the middle position, uh, reading lights are controlled by the passenger. And in the upward position, reading lights are forced off by the driver. And again, passenger buttons will no longer give it any kind of input. Next is the interior cabin lights. Down is on. Pushing the interior cabin button to the center position will make it dimmer and pushing it up will turn it off. Next button is the night light button. This button will create a nice uh, colorful hue and in certain packages you can control what color you want. On our van holes they are blue. Turning it on while all the interior, interior cabin lights are off will give the passenger a nice dim blue night light. The next two are blinks, then you have the luggage bay light, and this will turn on the lights down in the luggage bay. Really helpful at night when it's dark in the luggage bay and you need to get uh, past your luggage out of there. To the right of this, the new Van Holes have a really nice digital panel where you can actually Bluetooth your phone or personal devices into it, so long as there's Bluetooth access, and uh, along with a CD player, which I don't think, this is also a DVD player, right? Yeah. Yeah, AM, FM, DVD, MP3, Bluetooth. This also turns into a backup camera when you push the coach in uh, reverse. Uh, if you wanted to, there is also in the home button up here and then you can do camera right there. So you can force it to go into camera mode yeah. without actually putting the coach in reverse. Yeah. That's handy to know. And you can do that while you're driving, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so cool. you can have this on. And then in the newer van pools, um 2022 and up yeah some of them we have the ones that have surround so they'll actually do like the overhead view oh panoramic stitch yeah panoramic view will stitch it together kind of laggy so oh frame yeah. rate frame yeah, rate. The frame rate's not great on the new you need a better graphics card in that uh van pool. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I do. and finally on the last row of buttons you have your tpms sensor and one of our sensors is malfunctioning showing a low tire pressure and that's the whole reason this coach is sitting here today and you guys have to understand that when I choose a coach to record stuff on it's either usually needing maintenance or it just got back from a trip and I've been wanting to make this video for a while but we just don't get many Van Hools uh, here in the Urbana facility they're usually up in Chicago so again I'm a little self-conscious sorry about the conditions uh, those of you that are OCD and uh, pay attention to this kind of stuff uh, this coach hasn't been cleaned yet or serviced and it came back from Chicago. It's been up there for quite a bit, probably a couple weeks, two or, three, yeah. two or three. So it's here to get some TLC and before it gets the TLC, I nabbed it to make this video. So bear with me on the, uh, on the cleanliness and the conditions of this coach. And these things do get beat up uh, when they're away for weeks at a time. Uh, this is the preheat button. This will uh, turn on and off the preheater for winter conditions. This little bell button will allow passengers to sound the alarm. Once the passengers push the uh, red button in their service panel above their seats, uh, the SOS passenger emergency light will come on the dash. And to disable that, 
you can push up on this and this will not allow the passengers to uh, activate and trigger that. To the right of that is the wheelchair lift button. To activate it, you push it, it will start a really annoying beeping sound that'll give you a splitting headache but it tells you that you have activated the wheelchair lift. At this point, the coach will not go into drive uh, until you turn it back off. This is the 110 out outlet switch. Pushing it down will turn on all the outlets on the coach, allowing passengers to recharge their mobile devices. This is the fast idle button. This will cause the RPMs on the coach to rise. So on some of the older ones, and actually some of the newer ones, uh, 220 has the Cummins. Um, if you hit it twice, it'll actually do like an extra high idle. Oh. So it'll go up to like 1200, 15, but like between 12 and 1500. Okay. But some of the, some of them, it depends on how it's equipped in the engine. So it'll either do. It also depends on the engine type, right? Yeah. Yeah. So normal is like a little under a thousand, but some of them you can click it again, it'll go an extra high at a few extra RPMs. And just to be clear, I know someone will ask this 2020 model. A Van Hool CX45 uh, is equipped with a um, Detroit DD13 with a Allison transmission. And so on this setup, the fast idle button only gives it one setting, uh, bringing it up to uh, I think 900 RPMs is what the RPM gauge is showing. To the right of the uh, high idle button is the engine override. Uh, this coach is equipped with a smart sensor where if something's wrong with the engine, the coach will shut off. If you're running low on coolant, the engine's overheating. Even if you're in transit, the engine will shut off to protect uh, serious damage to the coach so that you don't have to buy a brand new engine. And uh, in the event that your engine is off, but you really need to turn it on to move the coach a few feet, a few inches, you can hit the engine override button and that will tell the sensor to ignore what's wrong with the engine and to allow you to turn the engine on to move the coach. Now doing so will be at your own risk because uh, if you end up seizing or locking up your engine by selecting the override switch, that's gonna be on you. And the manufacturers will be able to see it when they take the coach in to service it. If you try to claim warranty work, they can see that you override the uh, engine um, uh, sensor and that you force the coach to continue running after the uh, coach has told you, hey, you need to shut the engine off. So I wouldn't recommend pushing that unless you're in a dire situation. And even though uh, this coach is running fine, I'm just not gonna push it because uh, I don't wanna risk anything. <laughs> and the last button on the bottom row is the um, uh, engine brake. This is the Jake brake. Up is off, middle position is medium strength and pushing it all the way down will give the coach a very strong uh, Jake brake uh, reaction once you let off the accelerator. You know how the J's, you can um, step on the brake and put like test mode on flash on Yeah, and then you can do your pre-trip. Yeah, and then the Prevos too, if you didn't know, flick the flashers twice in neutral, they'll do test light mode. Van holes actually have the same, even the older ones. Here, uh, this, Push this button here. Diagnostic. Yep. Let's go down to diagnostics. And then go down to lighting override. And then exterior oh. and nice. interior. So you can turn on all the lights Ooh. on the inside. So you'll see it turns on all the reading lights and accessory lights. And then nice. on the outside, if you go outside, you'll see all the lights are flashing. All the lights are blinking right now. Yeah. I knew you would add to this video, Albert. Thank you. Albert yeah. is our bus guru. He knew more about these buses than the drivers and even some of our techs before he could even drive them. He, he spent his free time uh, when he wasn't programming, climbing around these coaches. And I think you were the first to discover all sorts of stuff on the tour riders when we first got out of things. It was fun kind of crawling through it. <laughs> well, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, stay tuned for the upcoming trip to Macedonia uh, to tour the Van Hool factory. And then following that, we'll be going to Eindhoven, uh, Netherlands to visit BDL headquarters, which is the company that has recently purchased Van Hool. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If I've left anything out, for those of you that are Van Hool experts, please feel free to uh, add to this video down in the comments below. And uh, if you guys like this video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, other than that, we'll catch you guys next time. Remember, if you're watching this, 
you are part of the motor coach world.